I Say Homes is a simple card game published by Victory Point Games. Uh, as the title says, it has a Sherlock Holmes theme and that is the first thing that attracted my attention because I am quite a fan of the work of Conan Doyle, actually even teach about Sherlock Holmes and Conan Doyle's work in some of my classes, including a class that I'm teaching right now. And so the theme interested me and it seemed to be a simple light card game with an element of social deduction so that made it even more intriguing because I thought if the game is fun and indeed light and accessible then maybe I can play with my students so that then we can discuss one more way in which Conan Doyle's creation has been represented creatively. Um, so these are the things that I was hoping from, from this game. A Sherlock Holmes theme, a game that was easy, accessible and fun to play. Let me show you the game and then we'll see whether or not the game held up to my expectations and hopes. The game includes a large deck of cards, which however, for all intents and purposes, you have to think of as, as two decks. Part of these cards will be used to form an initial deck uh, that you will use to deal out uh, the initial hand of cards to each player, and you will do that at the beginning of the game and at the beginning of each round, and then all of the remaining cards uh, will be used during the round. Uh, Many cards, as you can see, have a number printed at the bottom left corner of the card and when you're forming the initial deck, you simply go through the main deck and you select all of the cards that show a number that is equal to or lower than the number of players. You form the initial deck of cards, deal out those cards, each player will receive a hand of six and at that point you're ready to, to start. Uh, the quality of the cards is okay, they're not too sturdy, if you sleeve cards that's not gonna be a problem for you. I don't sleeve my cards but I still, uh, I can live with these cards. Some of these cards in my copy though have not been properly cut at the bottom, the bottom of the card is not fully visible and that sometimes makes it tricky when you're trying to identify the starting number. This is not a problem with this particular card, which will always be in the initial deck, and it is the starting card. The first player uh, to go in the game is the player that receives this card, and in their turn, they play that card. Gameplay is extremely simple. The idea is simply that a player plays a card, the card is then passed on to the next player that has to interact with it, has to respond to it. Cards have keywords at the bottom and these keywords indicate the restrictions that the following player has to follow. For example, if somebody play, the player before me played this card, this card is not in front of me, I have to respond to that and I will be allowed to play a card that matches one of these keywords. An arrest card, a constabulary, telegram or clue card. Cards have titles that identify them and that allow you to match them. So this is the card I have to respond to. Clue is an option. I play a clue card from my hand. This card is discarded. This one was discarded before. Now the clue card is the active one. Some cards have effects printed here and when that happens so you resolve the effect as you play the card. After you resolve the effect you pass the card and that becomes the next card the next player has to deal with. If you play the game Uno, which is a very popular game for families or children, the idea is exactly the same, that you always have to react to the card that the previous player played and it's really just a matter of matching things with some extra effects around it. Uh, speaking of indeed things that change things a little bit, um, some cards when you play them have a, a designation which may be any similar location or any dissimilar location. What this means depends on the location in which uh, figuratively the part your players is. The, the players can be in the city or in the country. There are several location cards here that belong to the country and several other ones that indicate the city. So if now this side of the location marker is up and somebody plays on any location card, somebody plays this card, then I can either play a location that is in the city or I can play the dense fog. If somebody had played a card that here said any dissimilar location or in the city, then I would have been forced to play a card that represents 
the countryside. And when you do so, you play that card. This would be the card that matches any dissimilar requirements. And you flip the marker to indicate that now players have traveled to a new location. And these cards here are called travel cards. So there are other cards that call for those. For example, when they say that any travel is a possibility. I say cards. These are sort of wild cards that will grant you benefits. I wonder if I can find one. If I can't, well, just trust me. You know, why would I lie to you? I say cards are semi-wild cards, or I should say, they, they can be used as wild cards. Here's one, because you can play them out of order, out of sequence. If you don't have anything, uh, they have restrictions here, but as long as you match the description and you're not breaking those restrictions, you can play them out of the strict sequence. However, as you can see from some requirements here, they can be played uh, in sequence. And if you play an I say card in sequence, you gain a benefit. And the benefit is you get to choose one of these markers, the destocker hat, the magnifying glass or the pipe, and you put in your play area and you will score those at the beginning, uh, at the end of the game. And these have numbers printed on the back that indicate the number of victory points that each such marker is worth. Uh, too bad, that's a zero. And you're not allowed to reveal or to look at the numbers um, on your markers until the end of the game. Some cards are interrupt cards. They can be played to counter the effect of other cards. If players are playing cards that will produce special effects that target you, then you can play an ally by card. There's another one called the mastermind card. They have restrictions, um, but the general idea is that they interrupt, they counter the effect of the card that was just played, and they become the new card, a new active card. Villain cards, these are cards that, well, when you get them in your hand, they usually stay in your hand. They may be game effects that allow you to move them to other players' hands, but they don't go on the table because they can't link with anything. So this is pretty much the general idea with a couple of extra wrinkles. For example, if you have seven cards or more, then you can play two cards. The second one has to be in sequence with the first one that you play that allows you to decrease your hand of cards a little faster. The idea is that you are trying to decrease your hand of cards. You need to have either an empty hand or a slow hand to be able to end the round and to score usually. A round can end in one of several ways. If you have a villain, you can try to side with the villain and to make the villain escape. If in your hand you only have a villain or you only have villains or you only have villains and interrupt cards uh, like this one and nothing else, then your villain or villains can escape. Then you simply show the hand of cards, you show that you have nothing but villains and possibly also interrupt the villain or villains escaped and you score the villain that you allowed to escape. For example, here I allowed Moriarty to escape. I gain this token here, which also grants me victory points at the end of the game. Another way to end the round is to actually capture a villain. Um, and you can do that if you have no cards in your hand or if you play an arrest card, there are cards that will allow you to simply perform an arrest action. So if you have no cards, you have to arrest somebody. If you play a card that is an arrest, you're also arresting somebody. Arresting somebody simply means that you're pointing to another player and you're accusing them of of protecting a villain, that is, of having a villain in their hand, that player gives you uh, their hand secretly and you look at it. If you were correct in your guess and there isn't a villain in there, then you capture the villain, you close the case and you end the round and you get some points uh, from that. Otherwise, if you missed, if you look at the card of the other player and there is no, there are no villains in it, then you have to keep that hand of cards and the other player will simply draw an equal number of cards. Which means if you have no cards, that restarts your hand. If you played an arrest card, then the new cards from the hand of the player you wrongly accused get in your hand as a penalty for accusing somebody wrongly. So there are uh, 
two main ways of ending a round by arresting a villain or by being the villain helping the villain escape if you arrest the villain then you have to calculate how many points the case is worth and cards have a number printed in the top left corner sometimes it's a zero but they still acknowledge that there should be a number you total the numbers of all cards in the hands of all players and the highest the number the most the more valuable the case was suppose at the end we total everything and the value is 60 this case was worth 60 which also means the earlier you end the case the more cards are in other players hands the higher the value will be once you have the value of the case you look at these tokens here the case closed tokens and you get the one which is the high which has the highest value that does not exceed the value of the case so for example if uh, i close the case i can score i get the case was worth 60 points i will be able to get this one not enough to get that one i keep it in my play area and again here there is a number of victory points that the token is worth and that i will score at the end of the game the game is over when this token here is assigned to some play to a player and that doesn't necessarily mean that all other tokens will be gone if now somehow we uh, next turn we end the case and the case is only 10 points i don't know how that would work uh the case is only 10 points then it's not enough to get any of the other ones this would be the highest value that does not exceed the value of the case that that would end the game so uh, the game does not necessarily end when all of these tokens are assigned when that token is assigned you count all of the victory points the players have earned from villains from tokens and at that point, the player with the highest total amount of points is the winner of the game. As we were playing the game, so one of the players asked me, so since you know Conan Doyle's work well, do you get the sense that the theme is here? Do you get the sense that you're like living somewhat of, of, of a plot? You're experiencing part of a story by Conan Doyle? And my answer was quite simply no. Not at all. I wasn't feeling like the game was telling me a Conan Doyle story. I wasn't feeling like the game was telling me a story at all. Uh, there are cards called Clues. There's a card called London. There's a card called uh, something else. I don't get the sense that I'm walking through London collecting clues and doing detecting. I'm simply looking at colors and I'm matching with other colors. And that is pretty much it. In that sense, the game really doesn't offer much more than, than Uno does um something that i noticed people have remarked on board game geek which is something i experienced too is that sometimes the game gets stuck that is the card that needs to be resolved uh, cannot be resolved if you cannot resolve the card then you draw a card from the deck you try to resolve it and if you can't then you simply get stuck with a new card and the card that you couldn't resolve goes to the next player who maybe can't resolve it, draws a card, and so on and so forth. And maybe the card goes around quite a bit, uh, clattering people's hands, and that is not all that fun. Um, that's a minor thing. The problem is that there are some of these minor things that are negative that, that weigh against the game, in my opinion, and I couldn't find many positives to counterbalance this. The game is like a fiddler version of you know with better art with better illustrations but even there if you're a fan of Conan Doyle then you start seeing things that don't seem quite right don't seem quite like what um, you know uh, the texts uh, uh, evoke the text describe microphones in a certain way and the card the high say card representing Minecraft is completely different from the way we see microphone in the sto short stories the same goes of course for the uh, deer stalker hat that was never mentioned in Conan Doyle stories so things like that minor things but let's talk about gameplay uh, the Problem with gameplay is that uh, it may get stuck sometimes, that's a minor thing. Uh, it doesn't have much to really make the game interesting. If you have a card that matches the color, then you match it. If you don't, you don't match, you draw a card, and maybe it will match it next time. It is very basic. 
What I hoped that the game would do anyways is that at least there would be an interesting deduction system that would work around that. So that in that case maybe the fact that the rules and the basic mechanics are so linear would allow me not to be distracted from the investigation, the deduction. But there isn't really much of that. Uh, if you have a villain and you're trying to escape with the villain then you're simply trying to clatter to to empty your hand as fast as possible um, and which you may or may not be able to do there aren't many things that you can do to influence that uh, there are ways actually to increase the hands of the opponents because there are many effects that force the opponent to to draw cards so if you're a villain you're a little bit at the mercy of whatever other people do they don't put a lot of cards in your hand and if you're lucky because you draw a lot of of um of alibi cards mastermind cards or counter counteract the cards those stay in your hand your hand still looks pretty big so that you will not be the first player to be targeted when players use effect that force other players to draw uh, cards you look like you're still quite far from closing the round but then you reveal you have like two villains three counter cards and you're able to escape with the villain that is the only thing you can do with the villain really um, as for the detective, there are a couple of ways of trying to figure out who may have the villains, but they're very limited. One way is there are effects that allow you to give one of your cards to another player, then if you had the villain, you get that a player stuck with the villain, and then you're simply trying to find a card that allows you to arrest that player. Doesn't really feel all that Sherlockian that you're basically framing another player who was not a villain, you're turning them into a villain so that you can arrest them. Sherlock Holmes sure had a big ego, but this just doesn't feel right. Also, also uh, on top of not being particularly interesting gameplay wise. Other than that, there is an effect that allows you to look at two random cards from from the hand of a player. Not enough to build uh, any form of deduction there. The player has five cards, you're looking at two. Maybe the player has a villain, you have no idea. The player will get a villain next time. Then you can play another effect against the player, but maybe you'll be seeing other two cards or the same two cards it doesn't matter uh, that really doesn't allow you to further your investigations much unless you're targeting a player with a very small hand but still not that much um so there aren't many many ways of doing that actually if you um you may end up having to perform an arrest because you have no cards in your hand then you have to choose a player maybe you have no idea of who may have a villain you simply probably will go for the player with the short with the smallest hand of cards so that if you made a mistake then you don't have that big of a penalty and maybe you get it right and maybe you get it wrong i did end up winning a game that way simply because it was stabbing in the dark and I ended up um, capturing villains completely by chance. I didn't feel at the end like my great strategy was rewarded. I thought that I got lucky. In other games I got stuck not having the right cards and I just couldn't do much. So the game is really uh, heavily luck based um, without many things that you can do to mitigate that. Uh, frankly, if I'm going to play a game where I just need to match a card that the opponent has played, then I will go with Uno, I can play with my daughters, and I feel that there isn't much less theme in there than there is here. The theme is not really there, the gameplay feels pretty bland, there's nothing wrong with the game if you want to kill half an hour and your copy of Uno is not there, but you have that alternative which is easier and more intuitive. And you have this one here, which is a little more ambitious, a little more complex, but not that much more rewarding. If anything, uh, there are aspects of it which feel less rewarding because they feel a little more filling and, and they may slow down gameplay a little bit. So, not a fan, unfortunately, of I Say Holmes, not a game that I will show uh, to my students and uh, a game that I would have a hard time recommending to other gamers just because even when it comes to simple, light uh, um, card games with not much thing, there are just much better options out there.